everyone. This is George Kroos of the Innovators Mindset Podcast, and I am really excited today to have my very good friend, uh, Jimmy Cassis, on today. He is awesome, and uh, we, we decided to just kind of last minute do this, and, and in fact, uh, we were going to do this about an hour ago, but Jimmy was out uh, social distance walking and uh, making sure he's kind of by himself, and so we're all kind of practicing that, but we, we wanted to really share some content, and uh, before Jimmy and I started a conversation, uh, he actually has a new book out called Live Your Excellence. And uh, also, I have uh, actually a copy, signed copy, very proud, of Culturize. And if you've ever, if you know of the book, Good to Great, that to me is the best analogy is that Good to Great is considered one of the best business books ever. It really talks about culture. Jimmy, in my opinion, wrote The, the Good to Great uh, for Education and Culturize. It's an absolutely amazing book. And so uh, he is, I, I've, the other thing too, I'll tell you before Jimmy and I start to talk, this guy is the real deal. I've seen him at work as a principal. I've been into his school when he was a principal there and it was just mind blowing the way that he, you could not tell the position of any person in the school because he treated everyone like they were the most amazing person and the most crucial. I'm talking students, uh, support staff, administrators it was just amazing how he made everyone know that they were part of a bigger picture and they were doing some really amazing things so i'm really i'm really excited to have you jimmy i know we're good friends um but it's i, I know a lot of people will benefit from listening to you today so thanks for thanks for coming on i appreciate it george thanks a lot i'm excited about it and um thank you for taking the time to do this today yeah and so hey jimmy like so right now like the lots of things going on in the world obviously you know i'm sure everyone knows about it. There's this, there's this coronavirus thing going on. I'm sure everyone knows about that right now. Uh, the, the first thing I want to ask you is like, how, how are you doing? Like, how, how are you? How are your, how is your family doing? Like, how, how are you dealing with all this stuff? Yeah, I'm actually doing really well. Um, I'm always been, you know, I'm that guy who's kind of a half glass full guy. So I always try to find the positives and the things that come from it. And I always think things happen for a reason. And when I begin to look at it from a larger picture, I think, you know, why are these things happening? Right. So when I just look at where our world is today and where our country is today and what's happening, I just think, you know, things happen for a reason. And I'm not so sure at the very end, you know, that there'll be a lot of good that comes from this, you know, just the way the people are coming together, uh, the way people are remembering the importance of connection, uh, relationships, obviously. Um, and, and just the idea of trying to figure out different ways and maybe just more than anything, it's just being grateful and appreciative for what we do have rather than what we don't have. Um, an example would be like, you know, last week when I went to the grocery store, it's kind of funny, right? I'm going to the grocery store, George, and I'm excited that something is there. Like I'm paying attention to everything that's in the grocery store. I, I got toilet paper oh, today. Look, bread, right? And I yeah. got excited about that. So it's again, it's like, you know, have we kind of just taken things for granted and like food in general, right? To go mm -hmm. to a place and think, oh my goodness, there's no this, there's no that. And so, you know, to me, that's just been a really neat thing. I also like the way just in terms of the connection piece, I just had a couple conversations with people today who told me that they've actually spent more time now connecting with either their family or friends that, than they had in the past. Uh, I know this past week was my birthday. That was kind of probably the hardest part of being alone. Nobody you know, mm -hmm. really wants to be alone on their birthday, but regardless of how old we are, but uh, we were able to have a, uh, a dinner night and a game night for three hours through Zoom. And it was oh, wow. awesome. We had a great time. We laughed. We, you know, it was just so much fun. And, and what I loved about it more than anything else, they looked forward to doing it. Mm -hmm. And now we're just going to do it every Sunday night. And I'm so I'm just really excited about that. Yeah. And I, I think that to me has been something that's kind of kept me sane through this stuff is to really focus on, okay, what, what am I grateful for? I read a post by a very a good mutual friend, actually the friend that introduced us, Patrick Larkin. And oh, yeah. he, he wrote about, you know, because of this situation, look at what you have because of this situation that you're grateful for. And uh, every night I'll ask Kalia, my daughter, what was the best part of your day? And like basically every night she's saying, daddy's home, you know, mm -hmm. and like it's, it's powerful. And, you know, like I, I haven't had that much time at home uh, with her as much time, you know, as, as someone who doesn't travel for work. And it's been really uh, amazing uh, to have that family time. So I'm glad that you're doing okay. I know that your 
I know that we, we both know there's a lot of crappy stuff that's going to come out of this, but we're also looking at like, how can we best serve and help others? And like, how is this going to maybe push some people to change some things because they know how important it is for our kids, for our communities that we think different about, you know, how we teach and what school looks like. Yeah. Another thing has been kind of cool. I mean, I've actually had a lot of people reach out to me privately, like, Hey, how you doing? You know, I know this is your business and just worried about you and, you know, how's it impacting you and so forth. And, you know, I always try to remind people, even in that case, like, you know, I appreciate that. And it makes me feel really good that people are concerned about that as well. And, you know, this is our business and this is what we do for a living now. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I've always thought this, like, even when I was uh, a principal, right, our pacing becomes so quick we get so invested in our work. We're passionate about what we do. We love Mm -hmm. what we do. And I think that's a blessing. But at the same time, I've always thought, you know, God has a funny way to reminding us, like either slow down, dude, or I'll slow you down for you. Like, Mm -hmm. so I think, you know, I'm a person of faith. I still am right in many, many ways. And, um, and so I've always thought like, I, you know, I'm always been uh, blessed in the sense, you know, I don't really get sick but I have had had back issues in the past. And every time I've had back issues where it kind of put me in a bad place, I always thought this is his way of saying, you better slow down a little bit. You know, you need to refocus back what's important. And so I kind of see that for all of us, right? Like this is, I mean, as a person of faith, I just believe that things happen for a reason. So it's it's interesting because a lot of people complain about one thing over and over again, that they have no time. And now people are like, oh my God, what am I going to do with all this time? <laughs> right. And I actually, I saw something on, uh, I saw something on Instagram. I thought it was hilarious. And it was basically someone saying, I always said, I will finally clean and organize the house when I have time. And now I've realized that's not the actual excuse. That's not true. I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. I have no, I have no interest in doing it now. So I thought that was, you know, yeah. interesting. And yeah, I, I do. I, I, I think that it has really help people appreciate, you know, some of the really good things that we have access to. And just, I was listening to Gary Vaynerchuk. It was just a TikTok, and it was probably like 15, 20 seconds. And he said, like, imagine this 25 years ago without the internet, right? It would have been, it would have been horrible, right? Just Mm -hmm. the, it's the, at least we have this opportunity to connect. Like Jimmy and I, uh, before we even started this podcast, we had a conversation for about an hour, uh, just chatting and catching up. And I think because both of us, we have time right now we, to do this. And actually, I'm going to tell this, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy and I were planning to do this today, and he forgot. And so he was late, and he said, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, can, like, can we, like, push it? And I said, oh, I'm, like, pretty booked today. <laughs> and so he's, like, apologizing. I'm like, yeah, I was going to take a nap. <laughs> take a know, bath. Take a bath. <laughs> So that was, yeah, like I'm just so busy right now. No, but I think, I think part of it is I'm trying to make time to, to work on some things and make sure that I have these connections. And uh, speaking of family, and I know this is, I, I, I met your parents and uh, we both have some similarities in, um, in kind of growing up that both of our parents are immigrants to a country, right? Like my parents are immigrants to Canada, yours to the U.S., correct? Like they're both immigrants? My, my grandparents are immigrants. But grandparents, parents, right? Parents. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I know that we've like learned a lot from, you know, their stories and, and how important that was. And I, I met, I met uh, your dad and the reason, the reason I'm bringing up, he reminds me, first of all, a lot of my dad, they don't look the same, but they're very similar and kind of like how they act and, and like, and your parents are both the same as mine that they like, you're healthy if they're stuffing food down your face too. Right. Yeah. I remember that. And so I know your dad is, um, is or just is, the accent and the totally or, or limited English and totally. Yep. And I know your dad is, uh, dealing with cancer right now. And I saw that, um, I know a lot of people know this, that you have, um, a flight flight cancer initiative. And can you, can you want to talk a little bit about that? Like what's going on with that and, and how your dad's doing? Yeah. You know, when I got the news of that, um, you know, again, it's the same thing, right? Like, I still remember 10 years ago when my father was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. I remember I was at work and my mom called me and said, you need to come to the hospital now. Your dad's not doing well. And yeah. she'd explain what had happened. I remember walking into the, into the room there, George, and just for the first time seeing my dad, like a broken man, like I'd never yeah. seen him like that. Yeah. And um, so anyway, he, you know, his attitude was kind of like, you know, I don't know, you know, 
it was it wasn't very good let's just say and I, I remember looking at him saying hey you know what here's the thing what are your choices you know you got grandchildren you love and you want to see them so you just need to remember that right so yeah. i look at me i feel like i'm on some sort of what is this like ellen show or something you give me the, <laughs> i'm okay. knocking off so yeah, so anyway so uh yeah. but uh the good news from that i mean he was able to get through that but at the time when you're doing it you're willing to do whatever it takes to, to continue to right. live but it also took like years off of his life like he wasn't this i mean it looked he just right. aged overnight right what that does yeah. chemo and radiation so anyway, so the good news is he's able to work through that and get through that. And he's had some health issues, but for the most part, his quality of life has been very good. Well, now he's diagnosed with uh, um, cancer again. And this time, the problem with prost prostate cancer, it's not that prostate cancer is not even from a survival rate is pretty good. But the problem mm -hmm. is he already has so much damage from his previous cancer that there's right. nothing they can do for him. So, right. so that's the hard part now to accept is that you know now you have a limited number of years or time, yeah. right? Because there is no cure. They're not going to do any treatment for him. He's taken a shot and an experimental pill, and, and that's all they're going to do because he can't have radiation and he can't do the surgery. It's too risky. Um, and so he's decided now that he'll just, you know, Mama Casas will pull out the rosary and he'll do the best he can and, and, mm -hmm. and continue to do that. So the idea of flight cancer was to kind of do something uh, – for me to kind of always remember so I don't, you know, go invested in my work or whatever and, and kind of right. forget about him. So it's funny, every time I see a flight of stairs now, I just look at it differently, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Like I'm in the airport, it's funny, George, because like I'm like walking up the stairs with luggage or something, or even if I don't, and people are like, what are you doing? I mean, there's an escalator right here. I'm like, I know, I'm good. Or I get to a hotel, hey, can you tell me where the steps are? Oh, the elevator's right around the corner. No, I know but can you point me to the stairs? And they're looking at me like, why would you take right. the stairs? Right. So it's kind of funny. But for me, it's served as a really good reminder. And it's been really cool having people, even in privately or send me messages, hey, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I always take the stairs now, or it's always a reminder every time I see them, I see them differently too. So that's been a really cool thing. Yeah, and there, there, Jimmy and I talked about this because I wanted to make sure that I was okay uh, before the podcast, if I could talk about this and part of the reason I want to bring it up is because I want to bring awareness to the flight cancer hashtag that you're you started and you started utilizing and I think right now you know um, people exercising at home and if they have stairs they could participate right and yeah absolutely. you know, you know yeah. so so like what, what do you what do you what have you been encouraging people to do yeah like a challenge could be you could take like a 30-day challenge right you could say on day one i'm going to do this there's up and down once day two i'm yeah. going to go up and down twice right and just do that you know again for health for fitness for body for spirit there's so many other benefits that come out of that but it's just the idea of reminding us that we are blessed that every one of us are blessed if we're able to walk the stairs we should feel really good about that right like mm -hmm. that we can still do that so um, so even if it's just walking up and down the stairs, I tell people, some people run them, um, but obviously right now, but at some point when we get back and are able to go back outdoors and go to different places, just maybe, maybe take stairs now instead of an, an elevator, right? When yeah. you can. And again, I'm asking people to do it in reason, but just for themselves and a reminder. So yeah, but if they do, you know, want to share that or, you know, you just do it, you don't have to obviously advertise it. Like I told people, like, I don't advertise it any, every day anymore. I just did it in the beginning to get it going. But now I just give updates, you know, every couple of weeks or so. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just to, just to do it for yourselves, really. It's more than more than anything. Yeah. And I know that, you know, I know both of us are we we're really um, we've learned a lot from our parents. And it actually when you were talking about your dad, I remember my dad, I don't know if he had like I was 18 or something like that. I don't know if he had colon cancer, but he had something that was an issue there. And there is like a, my dad pre that operation and after, and after he was, he was much more loving and caring. And it wasn't like my dad wasn't a loving person. He just didn't show it in a certain way. I don't know if that makes sense to people listening, but after that, you know, I, I think the number of times my dad would say, I love you to me in a week after that would be equal to what he said my first 19 years of growing in, up in your lifetime. Right. right. And I yeah. think he realized, you know, that, you know, time is limited and you got to make every moment. Like luckily he had another 20 years with us. And I, I know that just both of us have learned a lot from our parents and a quote that actually is, is actually being reshared with me. 
um, that I that I said that I learned from my parents is the idea of change is an opportunity to do something amazing. And I share about my parents' immigrant story often and how they came with nothing and did so much with that. And a lot of people are seeing, they're talking about that, that quote and that notion right now because they're seeing that, yeah, this is horrible, but what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to actually walk out better after this? Like, how are we going to walk out in a way to really rethink school and really focus on what's really important in schools? Like you're seeing all these places, Katie Martin and I were talking about this last week, all these places, they're not doing standardized tests and no one cares. Like it's not, right. they're, they're caring about the connections their teachers have with them. They're connecting, you know, like about their kids being creative and doing meaningful work, but no one cares about the tests. No one's worried about that. And so like, why are we going to go back and worry about that? Like, why are we going to put that back on the table when no one really cares about it? So I, I know we've learned both of it. And that's why I want to talk about it because I know how important our parents are to us. And I know how important it is for us to be good parents because of our parents and the connections we have. But um, I wanted to talk about, I know Jimmy just released a, a, a new book and uh, we were talking about this before released it. The day it came out was the day the NBA suspended all play for the year. And it was just crazy. Right. Like, and I know that I've read it. I love it. And um, like a lot has been happening since it's come out, but I think it's a very relevant read to really, remember why um why we do what we do and so if you could talk about a little bit about culturize a little bit about live your excellence and the connection between the two right? that'd be great yeah uh first george i just want to tell you you know also just i know this is also the anniversary month of your father's passing too yeah. man it's been yeah. a hard one for you too so i appreciate you willing to talk about it too yeah. not just me so thanks for doing that yeah. so um and God bless you and your and your family and your and your awesome mom too. So tell her yeah. I said hi. Yeah. Um, well, culturize. You know, obviously, you know. Again, I'll share this, and I've and I've said it before. You mentioned earlier that you know Patrick Larkin, you know, introduced us there in Indianapolis, and and that was awesome. And I still remember sitting at that dinner table that night and having a conversation. And you know, I've shared this before, and you and I have talked about it a lot. Just the encouragement and the challenge to not just talk about it, but to believe, Jimmy, that you have a story there that you should share with others, right? And at the time, social media, I was, you know, I just started, um, you know, into that as well. And and you helped me and encouraged me to get that story out. And always, obviously, always been grateful for that. And and that eventually gave me the confidence, right? To when you pushed me to blog, and that gave me some confidence to start writing. And and at some point, you know, I felt like I had the confidence that I could maybe write something, right? And um, and so when I started looking at that a little bit and just started talk, thinking about just leadership in general and school culture and, um, and what happens to people over time when they first go into the profession. So it was interesting because I'll be honest, when I wrote Culturize, there were still so many more thoughts that I wanted to write about. I just couldn't put it all into that one book. So even as I was writing Culturize, I was actually taking notes about other things that I couldn't fit into that book. And so I think there's a natural connection that blends but the first book is really just about looking at how we lead our organizations as a classroom teacher or as a building leader or as a district leader, or whatever, but to really operate from, for, from a core fundamental principle. And, uh, and then to be able to help people that, for me personally, when I uh, was a principal, I struggled early on in the beginning because I wasn't leading from a core principle. And I wanted to remind people that when we went into the profession, there was this idea that there were reasons we went into it. And so I just tried to write a book based on those four core principles that I really tried to model and invest in specifically over my last 12 years. I'm um, sorry, over my last 10 years, because I know in the first 12 years, I didn't do that, right? I mean, I talked about those things, but I didn't necessarily do them. And uh, and there was a moment when I thought about leaving the profession, leaving the principalship. And and, and the good news is I had really strong mentors and uh, confidants who uh, reminded me of to reinvest in looking at not the culture through my eyes, but to really look at the culture through the eyes of the students and the staff and other people's eyes and to help me become a better leader and hopefully become a better teacher overall, right, to teach people. And so that was the premise of Culture Eyes. And then with Live Your Excellence, it kind of blended in the sense of that I do believe that, and I still, and it blends in with culturizes that when people first go into the profession, I think people go in with really good intentions, wanting to make a difference, wanting to make an impact. And somewhere along the way, George, we just lose our way. Um, 
you know, I think all of us at some point, whether it's in our relationships, our marriages, um, our profession, I think there are moments when we've kind of found ourselves on the edge of the couch, not knowing what to do, what, ready to give up and thinking, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And so I wanted to write a book that told people, it's okay to be on the edge of the couch and you shouldn't beat yourself up over it. But there's better ways of doing things. And if we can just look inward and realize that most of the issues that, that we face are challenges in our personal lives and our school lives, our work lives, we're actually creating them. Mm -hmm. And if we could just look at it differently, I think we'll be better for it. We'll, be, we'll bring a better version of ourselves, not just the school, but if we bring a better version to ourselves at school, then that means we go home a better version of ourselves too which means now we can be a better husband, a better father, a better mother, whatever happens to be the case. So, so that's the premise of really both of those books. And I just try to help people see that, hopefully give people some hope and give some people some practical ideas, how to maybe begin to manage it and look at it differently and, uh, and realize that things not only can be better, but they will be better if you believe it. I think one of the things that as I'm listening to you that I'm really starting to notice and I'm just talking off the top of my head, is I think a lot of educators right now are being really reminded of how important their job is. And I think this is one of the things that is really easy to lose is that school districts, administrators can start to overwhelm their people with things that no one prepared them for that in college or university that aren't as that important, right? Like all the paperwork, all the stuff we don't, talk about and I think people are really realizing and I think like, it's obvious that people outside of education are really realizing how important educators are right now but yeah. I also think I think educators are being reminded of how important their work is which I think is really interesting and I think you just really bring that home uh, well in both your books and I both from an administrator and a teacher perspective which which is why why I love them and I want to share when we first met Jimmy and I Jimmy didn't like me at first by the way <laughs> but on the same day he ended up liking me so I was busy doing something and he thought I brushed him off etc now you know I consider Jimmy one of my best friends but I remember distinctly we were actually sitting at a restaurant it was almost empty there was like no one there it was in Indianapolis and Jimmy will tell you this over and over again he hates writing and I remember and for this is the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know a lot of people listening are scared to blog and scared to do this and this is the advice I gave Jimmy and he's he's embraced it and i wish other people would embrace this too because he's like i don't like writing I'm, I'm like but you can talk and you can talk and he was telling all these really amazing stories and i was just so i was just in awe i'm like you need to write a book or you need to like start a blog right i remember i think i didn't say write a book but start a blog and you're like i hate writing i'm like well don't d write the way you talk you'll be fine and that's and when you read any of his stuff whether it's his blog his books it's it's like I'm sitting and having a conversation and I wish more people would embrace that, right? Like that, because I think a lot of people, when they think of blogging, they go to like their college essays, which nobody wants to read, including the people writing, them, right? Like probably the professors don't want to read them. So like, how, how have you like embraced, like how has that helped you through your process of what you do with writing? Yeah, and I love that, right? Because that's what I share with today, people, right? People always ask me, how do you get started? How would I do this? Oh, no, I wouldn't blog. What would I have to offer? All mm -hmm. these things. And I always go back to the same story, right? I said, well, I'll give you the same advice George Kuros gave me, and that was write like you talk, right? And uh, But it is agonizing for me, right? It's excruciating. I mean, right now, I'm hoping uh, through this period is to, re to reignite myself to begin blogging again. Um, cause I've kind of lost that a little bit and, uh, but it's, it's excruciating for me. I don't have a lot of confidence and every time I do it, I don't like the actual process of it. Like it, I don't like how it makes me feel. I feel like I lose confidence. I feel like I, it, what I'm writing isn't very good, but I stick with it. And the reason I do George is for a couple of reasons. One is to continue to challenge myself, but it's also to remind myself what kids feel like every day in school. I mean, a lot of our kids in school, whether it's writing or whatever, the, whatever it is we're asking them to do, whatever that skill is, when they don't think they can do it and they lose confidence, for me, it is always a reminder that that's how I feel. And so it almost creates empathy for me for others who struggle because I can, I can relate it to it, but just relate it to it maybe in a different way. And so I almost write to do it, to, to, uh, to never 
allow me to forget what it feels like to be a student who struggles. And uh, I think that helps me. But when I'm done, oh man, it is awesome, right? It is a great feeling. Like if I write a blog post, I'm so excited about it. Like when I'm done with it, right? I'm really proud of it, right? I'm proud for me right. too, because I do it for me, but I'm proud of myself. And, and then obviously, you know, when I talk about Culturize, you know, I was really proud because my mom still carries the damn book in her purse, George. I mean, she That's just, awesome. <laughs> she still shows it. This is my son wrote this book. And I love it. So she keeps asking me, when's my other book coming? When's my other book coming? Right. And so I know what <laughs> she's going to do with it. So, but I understand it because there's that sense of pride. So, well, they, you know, listening to that point, the whole reason I even started blogging was to understand it from a student's perspective, like what it was to struggle and what it was and I think a lot of us as educators, we, it's really easy to get in the space of where we just do things and we're on autopilot because they're easy to us. And then we do lose that perspective of like, you know, why doesn't this kid get calculus? Well, because, because they, they haven't done it for years. It's not normal to them, right? But even the, even, the, even the analogy that you give, I'm kind of, like I've really been focusing on my health and I've really been focusing on on going to the gym and working out and really pushing myself not just like because it was one thing to show up but to to put in effort is a totally different thing and sometimes I'll be there and I'll just like oh I guess this sucks I don't want to do this I don't feel like running today but I never feel worse after I always feel way better after right yep. and I think I think it's good right like I think it's good that we put ourselves because a lot of these things we know are hard and we struggle with but then we actually complete them. They do, they do make us feel better. So I appreciate that, that analogy of kind of like what you shared of your own process. And so the, the last question I'm going to ask you, um, and really the, the reason I, I, I would actually do these podcasts solo often, and because I didn't have the time to necessarily do a consistent interview with somebody, and now I have some of that time. And part of the reason is I want to really try to help educators that are going through all of this stuff that's happening in the world. And I think a lot of it's, you know, of course, the concern about um, like the coronavirus, COVID-19, but I think a lot of it is with uncertainty, right? Like we don't know, right? Like this is going to be, are we going back to school in three months, five months, a year? Who knows, right? So Jimmy, like what advice would you give to people right now? What is some of the best advice you, you've heard or that you'd like to give? Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, number one, I think uh, that we've, you know, I think we see this going on right now. It makes me feel good. It's just, you know, it's a reminder that everybody needs connection. You know, the, the human connection is so important and not just teachers connecting with kids. We know that's important, uh, but we also have to remind ourselves that somebody needs to be connecting with the teachers too, right? So there's this connection of everyone and, and how can we do that more intentionally? So one, you know, if you're a principal, I would encourage you to make sure that you still have weekly meetings with your staff, if for no other reasons to bring people together, uh, to give them something to look forward to. But I still think it's important to have an agenda, uh, but not so structured. So you could do things where people are still doing some teaching and learning part of that meeting and so forth, but to give people that information. But um, so I think that's important. I think it's important for teachers right now to be checking in with their students at least every couple of weeks just to check in how they're doing. Um, if they have opportunities to even interact with mom or dad or a guardian or whoever, grandma, grandpa, that's important too. But the one thing I've been thinking about lately, and I think this is the thing that I get a little nervous about is, I also think that right now when, when we have to make decisions, I still am a believer is that we should be bringing people together uh, to you allow your team to help you make the decisions. I do get worried about administrators right now feeling like they have to make all these decisions on their mm -hmm. own. And I do think they should be bringing people together and, and slowing down a little bit. But here's my biggest fear is that everybody is looking around, maybe seeing what the next person uh, down the next district is doing. And I think social media, that's where it works against us because I think it's a little bit of the mentality that it's great that we're sharing all these ideas, but it's, it almost feels like we're inadequate because we never are doing enough. Like, oh my God, well, we should be doing that. Or maybe we should be doing this and maybe we should be doing that. Mm -hmm. So the advice I would give people right now is trust in your own team because nobody knows your own kids, your own school, your own community better than you. And, and come together with that family and make decisions because you're not going to hurt the children just as long as you're doing it with, you know, we know we're doing it with good intentions. We're trying to do the best we can. But let's, I think the talent is right there and the ideas are right there and the, each individual uh, district can create their own. 
And then once you put something into place, then I think you can begin to look outward and begin to make some adjustments and do some tweaks. I just get a little nervous that people are going to constantly feel like inadequate, like they're not doing enough, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's a terrible thing for educators right now because they already feel terrible that they're missing their kids and they don't get to make the same impact, but they, they can and they will. Uh, but don't just con continue to compare yourself to everybody else uh, and work with your own team first and, and trust in what you're doing is good for kids. If you got the right heart and you're doing it with good intentions and the ability to connect, um, you'll be fine. And I think the three things is unless to you is connect that human relationship. And I keep saying this over and over again, the relationships are just as important as they were when kids are in school. They're just harder to do, but you still got to do them. Right. Sure. And that's checking on your colleagues. Um, slow down. Just think about all the things that are happening and just kind of chill out. You do not need to push stuff. And I think the third one that I took away when I'm listening to you is, is really focusing that all the talent you have, you have in your building is what you need for right now. Right. I think, I think those are really important points and crucial yeah. to what just we do. Just not to constantly be comparing yourself with somebody else is doing and uh, initially anyway, and, and, uh, and trust what you're doing. So, cause you yeah. know, your kids better than anybody, you know, yeah. your staff better than anybody. And I think that's the most important point, right? Like you, you know, different people are different or different school districts and different teachers are dealing with this because they know their kids better. And that's something I always say to people is that I can give you ideas, right? But I, you cannot take anything that I tell you and just carbon copy it because I don't know your kids, you do. And that's why that relationship piece is so important is, is to the work that we're actually doing and, and how crucial it is. So I, I, like Jamie, I, I, we were just trying to keep this short. Um, but first of all, thank you for coming on. If you don't have the book Culturize, uh, it's an amazing book. Live Your Excellence. I've read it. I don't have a copy of it yet because I think everything slowed down, you know, to get it. I don't even have a copy yet. <laughs> right. Jimmy doesn't even have a copy yet. I think it's extra. I think it's extra to Canada because the, the border <laughs> closing. So this is the only way we could probably see each other. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you for all you do. For all of you listening to you, uh, check out Jimmy's blog. Uh, you, I think it's jimmycastis.com, correct? Yep, yep. And you can follow him on Instagram, Twitter. He shares a lot of stuff. I, I love your thought of the day. Just something basically inspiring every day. I don't even know how you come up with so many. To be Microblogging. Honest. Microblogging. Microblogging. That's a great way to look at it. So thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for everything you do. Jimmy, thanks again for, for joining us. Take care. Appreciate it, buddy. God bless. Thank right. you. See you, buddy. Bye.